Ready? Ready. All right. Oh, you're not ready? You are? No, you're not? OK. All right, here we go. So what we have here is 3g squared plus 8g plus 4. And what I'm asking you to do is find the solutions to this equation, right? We need to find the values that make this equation true. So we need to find the values of g. Now, under, understand, ladies and gentlemen, we can't go back to algebra 1 and just isolate the g variable because there's more than one g variable. And we can't combine them because that's a g squared and that's a g. So we have to use factoring. All right. So our main mode here is going to be looking at factoring. Now, um, when we're looking at factoring, when we have our a, it, which is greater than, or the absolute value is greater than 1, or at least the, the, our, um, our coefficient of our quadratic term is not 1, we have to apply sometimes what we call the AC method. All right? And I'm just going to show you one way. There's multiple ways you guys can do this, but here's just one way. So what we can do is multiply. If you create a little x, here's one way that I like to do it, is create that a times c on the top and b on the bottom. And this is just a way that I like to visually represent the problem so I can think about it out loud. All right? So you could do 3 times 4, so a times c. And you're somebody saying, where's a times c? Well, remember, this is in quadratic form. Um, maybe I'll use x's so I'm not confusing you. This is what a quadratic equation, standard form of a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c. Remember the quadratic formula? You guys go from this. So the x's are the same thing as the g's. We're just using g's in this problem instead of x's. But it goes through. So a, b, and c represent real numbers, where a and b are your coefficients of your variables, and c is your constant. So when I do a times c, I want you to multiply a times c, which in this case will be 3 times 4. Well, 3 times 4 is 12. And then our b is our middle term, which is 8. So now what I need to do is determine what two values multiply to give me 12, but then add to give me 8, and that is 6 and 12. Very good. Or 6 and 2, right? OK. So where it gets hidden with a lot of students, and this is where everybody gets messed up. Um, previously, when we had one where their a when we had a equals 1, we knew that these were a part of our two factors, right? And you'd just say, like, g, minus, g plus 6 and g plus 2. But those two, if you just write it like this, g plus 6 times g plus 2, that doesn't multiply to give you that. Why? g times g, if you use FOIL, g times g is g squared. We need 3g squared. Yes? Yes, question? No, well, the problem is, is when we apply FOIL, right? And that works. This method works when you don't, when you don't have, when your A is 1. When your A is 1, these are your two, part of your two factors. But when A is not 1, we can't, we can't just take these and apply them in there. We have to go at second step. So it's just an added step. So I'll show you what you need to do. Now, there's a couple ways we can do this. And one way is going to go to that product of factoring that we're going to do. So one way I like to do is these are now, I'm going to include these as my middle term. So what I'll do is I'll say 3g squared, and then I'll do plus 6g plus 2g plus 4. All right? So what I have done is pretty much what I did, ladies and gentlemen, is I broke up 8g into two different numbers. Now, is there infinite many numbers that I could break up 8g into? Could I do 7g and 1g? Could I do 10g minus 2g? Could I do 100g minus 92g, right? There's infinite many numbers. But I chose 6g and 2g because those are the only two numbers that added to give me 8, like 6 and 2, the coefficients. Those are the only two numbers that added to give me 8, but that multiplied to give me 12. And remember, multiplying 12 was from 3 times 4. So now what do you do in this problem? What do you do in this situation? You group it, right? Exactly. Now I want another color. So we can group the first two terms, group the second two terms. right? And this goes to that, with that distributive property with the four numbers. You've got to group them. When you have four terms factoring, you've got to do it through grouping. So then you say, what do these two have in common? You can say you can both factor out a 3g. By factoring out a 3g, you're left with g plus 2. Here, you can say you can factor out a 2, a positive 2. And you'll be left with g plus 2. 
equals zero. Now you look at this and you say, when you're factoring by grouping, you're factoring out distributive property twice. First, you factor each one separately. Then, now you say, all right, what do they have in common again? They both share the term g plus 2. You guys see this? Um, that right there. See how they both share a g plus 2? So I'm going to factor out the g plus 2. And then what's left over is a 3g plus 2. And remember, this always equals 0. This equals 0 never went away, right? Everything you write, make sure you're writing equals 0. Teachers and students, pardon the interruption. At this time, we would like to ask all seniors, teachers, please hold release on. all seniors hold on, hold on. to the auditorium at this time. Hold teachers, on, hold since on. your class hold is comprised of all seniors, we ask you to escort your class and remain with your class in this assembly. Again, all seniors should report to the auditorium at this time. Teachers, if your class is comprised of all seniors, please escort your class and remain with them in the auditorium for this assembly. Thank you. Hold on. Let me finish this up real quick, because this is very important for you guys to understand from this last point. What you guys need to do is now is remember we have something one times a, a term times another term equals 0. So when you have something times something else equals 0, what the 0 product property tells us is. Teachers, one more quick reminder. Students do not need to bring their things. Students do not need to bring their things. We will end the assembly in time to get you returned to your class before the change of classes. Thank you. OK. So what you can determine, though, is when you have one thing equal, two things multiplied to give you 0, one of them has to equal 0. So you set both expressions equal to 0. Now, can we solve these linear, like algebra 1? Right? Hold on. Just to, to. So you just solve for g. And now those are your two solutions. All right? And you can plug them in. If you plug in those two solutions in for g, you'll have this left side equals um, 0. And let me just show you just to prove it to you real quick. Might as well. Because what if I plug in negative 2? Because that will be pretty basic for me to use. Right? I said g equals 2. That makes this equation true. Well, that's going to be 4, so that would be 12. 8 times negative 2 minus 16 plus 4 equals 0. 12 minus 16 is negative 4. Negative 4 plus 4 is 0 equals 0. It's true, right? And you could do the exact same thing for negative 2 thirds. All right, does everybody, anybody have any other questions on that process? Because you're going to do like eight of them. OK? Cool. And that's not going to be all of it for this homework either. So um, all right, you guys, seniors. This